We'll be demonstrating a lower limb neurological examination. And we're starting out with the first step being general inspection or observation of the patient. So, Lindsay, we're gonna have you stand over here for a sec. Okay, and just face me. Perfect, okay. So starting out, we're just looking for symmetry between the two sides, any visible scars, perhaps some muscle atrophy. We're looking for involuntary movements uh, or even muscle fasciculations or tremors. So you want to observe both sides. And can you turn all the way around for a sec? Front and back, of course. Okay. Good, perfect. Yeah, and you can face me. The next part is a gait analysis, observing the patient walking, basically. So first off, you want to see if the patient's able to stand on their own without the use of their arms to help. So what I want you to do is cross your arms and then just stand. Okay, perfect. And you can relax the arms. So we're just gonna walk over here. And next, I'm just gonna observe your natural gait, your walking. So I want you to walk down the hall. There you go. Good, and as Lindsay's walking and come back, yeah, we're observing, you know, whether there's cross crawl of the arms, speed, symmetry, balance, if there's counter movement between her pelvis and her shoulders. Now, I want you to walk back this time. You're gonna go heel to toe. So basically walking in tandem, okay? So perfect, yeah, and just walk. Now, as Lindsay's doing this, what we're observing for is, is she able to maintain balance? Are her movements smooth? Uh, if someone has difficulty with this, they may have ataxia, for example, and they might broaden their stance, their body might be tilting back and forth, and they'll have difficulty maintaining this position. So if you were to see something like that demonstrated in the heel-to-toe walk, you would assume that there's probably a problem in the cerebellum, in the middle, the midline of it, the vermis, or a difficulty with proprioception, the sense of position of joint space and movement. So. If she were to tilt to one side, you could suspect that there's a lesion on that side. If Lindsay were swaying back and forth and having difficulty on both sides, then there could be a lesion on both sides bilaterally. So it's something to observe. You definitely want to make sure that the patient is able to balance. If not, perhaps stand a little closer to your patient as you observe them in case they do fall or tip over, just to make sure they don't hurt themselves. Continuing with the gait analysis and observation, we're gonna do a heel walk and a toe walk. So starting out, I want you to do the toe walk. So stand up on your toes and then walk. And we're observing here, we're, we're assessing the, the power of plantar flexion here. Good. Perfect. Okay, and now do a heel walk. So this is assessing dorsiflexion. Your ability to maintain it, basically. Good, yeah, it's a little hard to turn, no problem, keep going. Good. Perfect. Now we'll assess the patient's ability to maintain their balance through proprioception. So basically their sense of joint positioning. And we're gonna start out with Lindsay standing. You're gonna keep your eyes open for this. First part at least, bring your legs together and then rest your arms just loosely at the side, perfect. You'd want to observe the patient for about 20 seconds. Okay, and what we're looking for is if you're not able to maintain your balance or if there's any sway or anything like that. Okay, now you're gonna close your eyes and in this position, we'll observe the patient for 30 seconds. Now, a positive test would be if Lindsay were to lose her balance, start swaying, maybe step out with a foot, or in severe cases, even fall over. So what you want to do is when you do this test is you want to be relatively close enough in case the patient does fall in a direction, you can stop them, help them from hurting themselves. Okay, you can open your eyes. Next, we'll be assessing the tone of the muscles in the lower extremities. So all I want you to do, Lindsay, is just relax, make your legs floppy, try not to resist, just stay relaxed. So what you want to do is, you know, just get a general feel of how movement is, muscle tone, kind of work it both ways, bring it down, just look, oh yeah, nice and floppy, you know, kind of following it down here, and you want to do both sides, so we're gonna come over here, same idea, just a little bit of motion both ways. Yeah, try to relax the leg there if you can. And then just kind of move it back and forth. Good, just here. Okay, and one thing you could also do is just kind of let the knee go, just make it heavy. Just a little bit of the, of the knee bounce here. Okay, good. Now, once you've assessed the tone, you want to check for ankle clonus as well. And if that were positive, it would suggest an upper motor neuron lesion. So what we would do here is just gonna move your ankle in different uh, directions and then a 
a certain point, you'll feel a quick movement, okay? And basically, we're pushing it into dorsiflexion and holding that. Good. Okay, and we do the other side as well. Yeah, just let it go nice and floppy. And just one more time. Good. Okay, and that is basically assessing tone.